top stories of the day. Understand the issues that matter. This is Manila Bulletin News on Web. Your quick rundown of top news in the country and around the world. Manila Bulletin, celebrating 120 years of timely stories and timeless truths. Be fully informed. Hi, I'm Barbie Atienza. This is MB Now, and here are your news on web. In a televised address last Monday, President Duterte said that COVID-19 tests in government hospitals and health centers will be free if the state has additional funds. Cabinet Secretary Carlo Nugrales also said that health authorities must check first if the Philippine Health Insurance Corporation could afford to shoulder the COVID-19 tests for Filipinos. Our Malacanang senior correspondent, Jen Kabiling, has the details. The government must still study the proposed free coronavirus testing program and check the available funds of Philippine Health Insurance Corporation. Cabinet Secretary Carlo Nograles on Wednesday said, Health authorities must determine whether the state-owned corporation could afford to shoulder the COVID-19 tests of Filipinos. In a televised address Monday night, President Duterte pushed for free COVID-19 tests in government hospitals and health centers if the state has additional funds. Duterte said he realized the importance of COVID-19 testing to help curb the spread of the new coronavirus disease and asked Health Secretary Francisco Duque III to craft a program on how government medical facilities can provide free COVID-19 tests. No, so we, we have to also be responsible about uh, the, um, the funds that are currently with PhilHealth because it's a charge of PhilHealth. Yeah. So okay. it's a concept that uh, must be studied and I think pag kailangan pag-aralan ito, uh, I think we'll need to see the actual numbers and the funds of PhilHealth kung makayanan ba. The government earlier set a price ceiling for the polymerase chain reaction or PCR tests at 3,800 pesos in public health facilities and 4,500 pesos to 5,000 pesos in private testing centers. The price cap on COVID-19 tests was set to ensure its affordability and accessibility to the public amid reports about the alleged exorbitant rates in some facilities. And uh, I think ganun naman talaga yung gusto ni Pangulo, no? Kung mahirap, eh kailangan pumasok ang gobyerno para tumugon at tumulong, lalo na lalo na pag hindi naman makaka-afford ng testing. So ito yung palagay ko, ito yung uh, point. No, na gustong iparating ng Pangulo na pag kayo mahirap, huwag kayong mag-alala dahil nandito yung gobyerno para tulungan ka kahit na pagdating sa testing. Pending the study on the free testing program, Nograles assured the public that the government is ready to assist those who cannot afford to take the COVID-19 diagnostic tests. For MB Now, this is Jen Kabiling reporting. Malacanang said it will fully adopt the recommendations made by the Toll Regulatory Board to address the heavy traffic caused by the cashless transactions in the tollways. Presidential spokesman Harry Roque made a statement after Valenzuela City suspended the business permit of the Enlex Corporation due to the horrendous traffic brought about by the toll operator's shift to a cashless system. In its statement, the TRB said it has ordered toll operators to aggressively pursue and consistently implement the following measures previously instructed to them. And they are immediate replacement of worn out or defective sensors or readers related RFID equipment and RFID tags. Relocation and reposition of RFID installation and reloading lanes that hamper traffic flow. Maintenance and improvement and upgrading of system software. Enhancement of traffic management and the improvement of customer service assistance, among others. While acknowledging the need to immediately resolve the problem, Roque said the palace understands Valenzuela City Mayor Rex Gachalian's decision to suspend NLEX Corporation's business permit in the city. 
Pero ang TRB po, ang posisyon nila, kinakailangan talagang magkaroon ng pagbabago pagdating sa ating mga operators. Kinakailangan mag-replace ng kanilang mga luma at mga depektibong sensors para mapabilis yung daloy ng mga sasakyan. Kinakailangan mag-relocate, mag-reposition ng RFID installation ng reloading lanes. Kinakailangan magkaroon ng maintenance, improvement, upgrade of, ng kanilang mga system software. Kinakailangan ng enhanced public um, traffic management at improve customer service assistance among others. Thank so we adopt, of course, the uh, recommendations of the TRB and TOTO. The decision of the United Nations body reclassifying marijuana as a less dangerous drug would not affect the Philippines' policy outlawing its use and the country's anti-narcotics agencies said on Thursday. In a joint statement, the Dangerous Drugs Board and the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency said the government still has the jurisdiction relative to classifying and regulating cannabis at the domestic level. Last week, the United Nations Commission on Narcotic Drugs removed marijuana from Schedule 4 of the 1961 Single Convention on Narcotic Drugs, a list of the world's most dangerous drugs. Despite its removal from Schedule 4 of the International Drug Control Convention, PIDEA and DDB said marijuana remains to be a dangerous drug under Schedule 1. Also, the medical preparations or products with cannabis, however, still need to acquire and comply with the regulatory control requirements from PIDEA, Food and Drug Administration, and other government agencies. The two agencies also said cannabis is still classified as a dangerous drug under Republic Act No. 9165 or the Comprehensive Dangerous Drugs Act of 2002. PIDEA, meanwhile, assured that they would continue to enforce the law and enjoin the public to abide by the law. Senator Sherwin Gachalian said he does not understand the concept of why major communication networks have to impose expiry dates on mobile data when it is paid for by the consumers. In a radio interview, Gachalian said telecommunication companies operate their franchises based on the privilege given to them by the public. Gachalian had earlier filed Senate Bill No. 365, which prohibits public telecom telecommunication entities and information and communication technology providers from imposing an expiration date for prepaid load credits regardless of the amount involved. The bill covers prepaid cards, electronic loads offering voice, short messaging system, mobile data, value-added services, and loaded devices that make use of the internet, such as tablets, Wi-Fi, or mobile hotspots. The senator said immediate passage of the measure is necessary, considering that many families, students, and entrepreneurs rely on mobile data to study and to turn their businesses due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Violators of the bill would be fined 100,000 pesos to 2 million pesos and could face two to six years of imprisonment or revocation of their business licenses. In Metro News, truck ban to resume starting December 14, according to the MMDA. And Manila increases salary grade levels of nurses working in the city's health department and government hospitals. More from this report. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority, or MMDA, will resume the implementation of the track bond policy in the metropolis starting Monday next week. MMDA General Manager Jose Arturo Garcia said the reimposition of the track bond is to alleviate the heavy traffic this holiday season. He also cited the clamor of the Metro mayors for the resumption of the ban due to the increase in the number of vehicles plying in the road this Christmas season. Large trucks are prohibited along major thoroughfares in Metro Manila managed by the MMDA from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. from Mondays to Saturdays. Under the MMDA's existing track ban policy, the track ban is suspended on Sundays and holidays on major thoroughfares in Metropolis except on EDSA. The salaries of nurses working in the Manila Health Department and the six district hospitals in the capital will be increased from salary grade 11 to salary grade 15 following the signing of a city ordinance. 
Manila Mayor Francisco Escombra and Dumagoso on Wednesday signed CT Ordinance Number 8700 authorizing the updating of the salary grade levels for the nurse positions in the city. The signing of the ordinance was made pursuant to Republic Act Number no. 9173 or the Philippine Nursing Act of 2002 and is implementing guidelines under the Department of Budget Management Circular Number no. 2020-04. The amount needed for the ordinance will be sourced from the available funds under the fiscal year 2021 executive budget. Here are the top news in other parts of the country. Baguio City ready for holiday surge in COVID-19 cases. Bamboo bikes to help promote Guimaras as Philippines bike paradise. And former NPA rebel gets half a million pesos for surrendered firearms in Davao de Oro. More from this report. The city government of Baguio is ready for the expected surge in the number of coronavirus disease cases during the Yuletide season with the isolation units being upgraded and more than 1,000 isolation beds to be completed by the end of the year. The former Santo Nino Hospital, which is serving as the central isolation unit, will have a maximum bed capacity of 400 by the end of the month compared to its present capacity of 233 beds. Aside from the said isolation units, the city acquired the 53-bed V-Dorm 2 and the 60-bed Ferrioni apartment that now serve as quarantine facilities for individuals awaiting the release of their swab test results. The city government also received 12 million pesos from DPWH Secretary Mark Villar, the country's isolation czar, for the rehabilitation and upgrading of the Santo Nino Hospital and another 13 million pesos for the upgrading of the isolation units at the Baguio Teachers Camp. The island province of Guimaras is eyeing to become the country's bike paradise using the unique and iconic bikes it is producing made out of bamboo. The National Grid Corporation of the Philippines and Guimaras Provincial Government launched this week the Green Spark Project in San Lorenzo Town. The Green Spark Project promotes BAM bikes or the bamboo made bikes and it aims for inclusive growth that will benefit local communities in San Lorenzo Town. A group of local residents will create the bamboo made bikes as bamboo is abundant in the town while others will serve as guides for visitors. The social enterprise project will create sustainable jobs in San Lorenzo Town through handcrafted bamboo bikes. A former New People's Army rebel received 518,000 pesos for the 11 high-powered firearms he surrendered to the government in the southern Mindanao region. The reward was given to the former NPA rebel through the Firearms Remuneration Program of the government. The check was personally handed over by Davao de Oro Governor J.V. Tyron L. Uy during an awarding ceremony held at the headquarters of the 66 Infantry Battalion in Davao de Oro. The Firearms Remuneration is one of the many grants provided under the Enhanced Comprehensive Local Integration Program or ECLIP of the Department of Interior and Local Government that can be availed by former rebels who voluntarily surrendered their firearms. In world news, Canada approves Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine. Lab-grown meat to go on sale in Singapore is first in the world. And planets Jupiter and Saturn in great conjunction on December 21. Let's watch this report. Canada on Wednesday approved the Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine days after Britain became the first country to greenlight and roll it out. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau in a tweet called the announcement good news, but warned it doesn't mean we can let our guards down against the spread of the COVID-19 illness as a second wave forced several regions to reintroduce restrictions. The government's chief medical advisor, Supriya Sharma, said the authorization of the Pfizer-BioNTech shot marks a critical milestone in our efforts to bring COVID-19 under control. She said additional vaccines would become available and be rolled out throughout 2021, with three other vaccine candidates, including one developed by U.S.-based Moderna, which could be delivered later this month, currently being evaluated by health authorities. Lab-grown chicken will soon be available in restaurants in Singapore after the country became the first to greenlight meat created without slaughtering any animals. U.S. startup Eat just said Wednesday that its meat had been approved for sale in the city-state as an ingredient in chicken nuggets. The news marks a breakthrough for the global food industry, said the company as first increasingly trying to find less environmentally harmful ways of producing meat. Eat just hopes to bring down the cost to below of what conventional chicken in the coming years. The universe's biggest planets, Jupiter and Saturn, are putting on a rare show this month as they move close to each other in an astronomical event called Great Conjunction. 
The National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or NASA, said Jupiter and Saturn have been waltzing their way together all year, but they will appear increasingly closer together by around one-fifth of a full moon apart on December 21, the closest they have gotten in the past two decades. The December 21 events bring the closest Jupiter-Saturn conjunction since 1623, during Galileo's time, said the Old Farmer's Almanac, North America's most popular reference guide. In entertainment, 30 candidates of Miss Thailand 2020 beauty pageant plunged into a filthy pond during a photo shoot at a bridge in Chiang Mai on Monday, December 27. The moment was caught on film showing the women in matching outfits, sun hats, and face shields smiling and waving before the bridge collapsed, prompting screams. Moments before the splash, the girls had been posing on a suspension bridge made from ropes connected to a steel walkway. The owner of the eatery where the bridge was located offered 500,000 bots as compensation to shoulder hospital bills and get everyone's clothes cleaned. In sports, Nonito Donaire, a four division world champion, has tested positive for the coronavirus or COVID-19 and opted to withdraw from his bid to claim the vacant WBC bantamweight title on December 19. The 38-year-old Phil Andonaire was supposed to face Emmanuel Rodriguez of Puerto Rico in the Showtime main event set in Mohegan Sun Casino in Oncastville, Connecticut. Rodrigo substituted for Francis Nordin Oabali, who likewise tested positive for COVID-19 a month, month back. The news was first reported by BoxingScene.com, which also mentioned that the fight might still happen with Rodriguez, who lost to the IBF bantamweight title last year to Japanese Naoya Noah, possibly meeting another Filipino boxer in unbeaten Raymar Gabalio. And those are the news on web today, December 10, 2020. It's 15 days before Christmas. For more news and details, get your copy of Manel Bulletin newspaper tomorrow or log on to www.mb.com.ph or you may also subscribe to our newsletter through the link on this video's caption to have the day's latest news delivered to your inbox. I am Barbie Atienza from Manila Bulletin, celebrating 120 years of timely stories and timeless truths. Join us again tomorrow. Well, this has been MB Now. Be fully informed.